Pizza Flix presents Classic Movie Monday. Today from 1933 is a tearjerker by director Robert G. Vignola. It co-stars King of the Cowboys Randolph Scott in an early non-Western role and former Hal Roach Laugh Factory gal Martha Sleeper. Screenplay by Maud Fulton, best remembered for her work on the iconic film noir The Maltese Falcon. Dear. We're right here. We've been here all the time. Thanks, Angel. It, it helps a lot. Anything new? Nothing yet, Uncle John. I guess we'll just have to wait. Say, you better get a stretcher for that young insured. He's about ready to crack up. <laughs> What about her? You suppose she's in there laughing her head off? Ooh, hello. What are you going to be, a radio announcer? More food. You're done. Is the boy? Yes. How is heaven? I'm going to see him. It's all right, isn't she? I'm sorry, Bob. We did the best we could for her. We couldn't pull through. Come in and see the boy. He's a fine little chap. No. That's an interesting. He was all I had. She lay there for hours. In torture. Suffering. Golly, that's quiet, is it? Now, I wonder where Bobby is. 
I wish we knew. Well, it's a wonder he wouldn't have consideration enough to let us know something. I'll tell him a few things when I see him. Oh, please don't scold him. Scold him? He lets us worry for ten days and we don't know where he is or anything about him. I'll give him a piece of my mind when I see him. My boy, oh, I'm so glad you came back. Thanks. Is there anything I can get you, dear? No, thanks, Aunt Hilda. I came to say goodbye. I'm going away. Where? Anywhere. I can't stay here. Why not? Everything would remind me of her. I couldn't stand it. But Bob, dear, your baby's coming home today. Bob. Bob, my boy, listen. You know, the hospital's been calling for three or four days trying to find out where you was. It's none of their business. leading surgeon. He's asked for my best man, and I'm sending you. You sail for Vienna on the next boat. You know, a postgraduate course under Bachmann is the dream of every young doctor. I'm quite sure I'm making no mistake. I know you will make me very proud of you, Molly.
Follow the directions, please. And if a temperature arises, phone me instantly. Uh, yes, Doctor. Thank you. I brought you this to remember Junior by. Hmm. This is a lovely remembrance. I thought you'd like it. Oh. I've been looking at that photograph. Isn't it too pretty? I read about your engagement in the paper. I certainly hope you'll be happy. Thank you. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. him so much, you'll make him sick. He's still eating, Pop. He must be hungry. Ah, <laughs> oh, you will never learn. Mom, I need some more food for the monkey. All right, son. Here you are. Here's the monkey food. Look. And we didn't even know he was back. I'll call him up. But why should you call him up? He didn't think enough to call us up. I wouldn't even bother. Now, John, don't be too quick to judge. Quick? After six years? Got a gobble? Mm-mm. Marlene Dietrich. <laughs> no, you idiot, it's me. Your face is familiar. Haven't we met before? Who cares? I love to be kissed by strange men. You do, do you? <laughs> 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 Come here, woman. I haven't even started no, yet. No, you don't. Now behave. I'm taking you to lunch. You mean I'm taking you? I do not. In another week, you'll be buying all my lunches. All I'll ever eat as long as I live. Is that how you feel about it, too? That it's for always? Always. Get your cat and mittens, little boy. Be right with you. Did you ever happen to become a child specialist? Oh, we're trying to find some way to relieve pain. Children don't suffer much, do they? I wasn't thinking of them. It's the young mothers I was thinking of when I said that. Then you... You don't particularly care about children? No, not particularly. All ready, dear. Oh, fine. Dr. Morley. Yes? A uh, Mrs. Hilda Miller to see you. Uh, sure, Ren. Oh, must I go? Would you mind waiting in there? I'll only be a minute. Go, darling. Don't be long. Thank you, Hilda. I'm so glad to see you. I wondered if you would, he. You've been here all this time, and you never even called on me. I'm so sorry. But when I first arrived, I, I was so terribly busy. I put it off from day to day until, well, so much time passed that I... Well, I was ashamed to call. Will you forgive me? 
How is Uncle John? Oh, he's fine. He wanted to come too, but somebody had to take care of the store. Mm. Bob, I have a surprise for you. Surprise? I thought you would want to see Billy. He's grown into such a lovely boy. And Hilda. Does he know about me? No. To him, John and I are his pop and mom. He loves us as much as we love him. And you're going to love him too when you see him. Come here, dear. Billy, dear, this is Dr. Morley. Glad to meet you, Doc. Pop and I have known him for a long time. Hey, are you a horse doctor? Not yet. I used to, when I was in college. Where'd you play? Gotcha. Rat, that's easy. I'm pitcher on my team. You're my muscle. Hmm. Let me see yours. Pretty good for a catcher. You ever play now? No, I have to be careful of my hands. today. Excuse me, I'll be right back. Darling, would you mind having lunch without me? Why? <laughs> Why, no, of course not, dear. Just this one. Business first always. Oh, but dear, don't forget the Brooks reception. I'll be here for you promptly at five. <laughs> and don't you dare be late. Bye. Hey, Doc, what was the matter with that kid? Oh, a bad cough, and then it turned into fever. I bet I'd go to one medicine would have fixed him up. That's what Pop would have given him. <laughs> come along, son. We'd better be going. Will you come to my party? Will I? I'll do my best to get there. Okay. I'll watch for you. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, Margaret, have you any idea when the doctor will be back? We'll do the Brooks reception, and it's almost an hour late. Well, uh, perhaps some call is detaining him. Hmm. Well, I could save time by picking him up. Do you know where he is? Well, just a minute. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, and if I should miss him, tell him to go straight to the Brooks home. Does your dog do any tricks? He sits up for me and I bet you can't make him. I bet you I can. Okay, we'll find out. I believe this is the place. Like this. 
Beans, come up. Beans, come on. Oh, she? Oh. Oh, oh, Pop and Mom. I, I want you to meet my fiance. Uh, Martha, this is Mr. and Mrs. Miller. Bob has told us such nice things about you. <laughs> I'm pleased to meet your acquaintance. <laughs> we, we didn't exactly expect you. <laughs> no. I guess that. Oh, now that you're here, you might as well stay. Thank you, but I have a very important engagement. Or rather, I did have. Why, what time is it? 6.30, Barbara. You promised to meet me at 5. Holy mackerel. We were having a swell time. What did you want to come button in for? Oh. I'm extremely sorry. Goodbye, folks. It'll be fun. Happy birthday to you, Billy. See you soon. Bye, Bob. Thanks for the present, Dad. May I come with you? If you wish. There's so much I want to say. Listen, darling. It's, it's something we've got to talk over. Home. If you have nothing to say, I have. I'm furious at you, Bob. Positively furious. Well, you deliberately broke an engagement with me. I didn't mean to break it, darling. And where did I... I find you? In a cheap, horrible neighborhood with a lot of common people making another fool of yourself. Did you let me explain how... You stood there calmly and allowed me to be insulted by a dirty little gutter snipe. Wait a minute. You're speaking of my son. What? I told you that I'd been married and that I lost my wife, but... I didn't tell you about the boy. I, I wanted to forget him because he died when he came into the world. I never saw him until today. Why, Bob? I didn't mean to deceive you. I. Why? Of course you didn't, dear. I was so absorbed in my work and then with you that... Oh, please, darling. Let's forget about the whole thing. I'm afraid we can't do that, dear. I want to talk to you about Billy. Well, of course, dear. I think we should talk about it. Thanks. Darling, let me have Billy here. That's fine. <laughs> In that case, don't you think you'd better take off your hat? <laughs> <laughs> Frank are not leaving. I'm sorry, but we have to. Oh, it was no. a great success. Oh, we'll try to get up and get some bridge in. You bet. <laughs> you suppose we'll ever get that game in? I hope so. Excuse me, darling. Bye. Bye. Poor, worn out little hostess. But it was grand, darling. You look so tired. I feel grand. <laughs> Lovely party, darling. Thanks awfully. That goes for me, too. Bye. Uh -huh. Bye. How are you going, Paul? Okay. Bad for high blood pressure. Hmm? <laughs> well, I hope you're getting everything you want. Excuse me, sir. Telephone. The lady said it was urgent. Excuse me a minute, Paul. Sure, Bob. Well. Goodbye. So glad you came. Goodbye. You must have dinner sometime very soon. Yes, I see. You better phone for the nurse I recommended. Yes. Just a moment. Hopkins. Have my car brought to the side entrance, please. Very good, sir. Hello? I'll be there in half an hour. Soon if I can make it. I'm going to miss you. Hurry home. Goodbye, I gotta hurry. <laughs> Bye. I didn't hear 
the car. I thought you'd be asleep till I coasted in. What are you doing up so late? Oh, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> What's all the excitement? Twins. Oh, is that all? All? I wish you could see them. The cutest, huskiest little rascals that ever drew a breath. Beautiful kids. Yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Darling, you look all in. Get him something comfy. Good idea. <laughs> and did they have a stage fight when the curtain went up? <laughs> they all have fool heads off. Really? You know, this case alone, compensation for all these years of hard work and study. Mm. And was that little mother happy? Was she? Really? Yes, and I don't blame her. I wish we had them. Do you really mean that, Bob? What? About wanting children. Every man wants children, honey. It's the nature of the beast. Yeah. Don't you? No. What's the matter, darling? Afraid? Mm-hmm. A little. That's not like you. Oh, well, perhaps I'm just plain selfish. But you're not. Yes, I am, Bob, about something. Darling, I don't want anybody or anything to come between us. I know, dear, but when married people get older, well, they just get to be a habit, and they need something else, uh, a bond, something deeper than love. They need a bond to hold them together. Yes, it isn't that their love dies, it, it just changes. And you really think that a child... I don't think. I know. Bob, darling, did it ever occur to you that we have a child? What? Yes. Billy. Billy? Darling, he's your boy. You love him. And I love him, too, because he's yours. Darling, why can't we have him here with us? We need what we can give him. A real home and education. He's your son, Bob. And he'll be mine, too. If you're sharing with me. This is going to make that cat feel better. It's going to keep the dirt out. Here, you hold that. Hold it. No, I'm, no, 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 no,
What would you say if I asked you to come and stay at my house? Okay. That's great, Billy. But you got to have me back here at feeding time. Why? i got to help Pop. And then, at night, I help Mom wash the dishes. Don't I, Mom? Yes, darling. But uh, couldn't they get somebody else? They ain't got nobody else. Well, they've got me. There's your answer. You run along, son, and finish your job. When he was a baby, you wouldn't even look at him. Now you see what a fine boy is grown to be, you want to take it. Uncle John, I appreciate what both of you have done for him more than I can ever tell you. But I think... You that think, can... who cares what you think? You can't have it. You hear? You can't have him. He belongs to us. And we won't give him up. You may have to give him up. We won't give him up. You haven't legally adopted him. You haven't the legal right to keep him. I ain't her. Well, he's been with us ever since he was born, and I'm going to keep him. Now you get out of here. John! John! I'm sorry this had to happen. Oh, oh Bob. Goodbye. Well, then... I guess we'll have to let the law settle it for us. Yeah. We'll see about that. There ain't a law caught in the world that'll take him away from it. There now. Doesn't that feel better? Now, make a face like a mammy singer. Darling, in a minute. What's the matter? Just something I can't talk about, Billy. You've been crying. Oh, Billy. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. You don't need to be afraid of nothing. Not while I'm around. And did Dr. Morley ever intimate in his letters that you were only the temporary foster mother of the boy? We didn't get any letters from him, Your Honor. He never made any inquiries as to the child's health? No, Your Honor. He hated the little fellow from the first minute he was born. Just how do you explain that, Dr. Morley? I loved his mother very much, Your Honor. Just before the end came, she suffered rather horribly. I was so completely crushed that I blamed the baby for her death. When I saw Billy, after my return from Vienna, I realized that more than anything I ever wanted in all my life, I wanted my son. Of course, with Mrs. Morley and myself, the boy will have advantages that few children are granted. He'll have his father's love. Our love. Having heard the evidence on both sides, I can honestly say that this case is one of the most difficult I have ever been called upon to decide. Mr. and Mrs. Miller are the only parents the boy knows, has ever known. Personally, I feel that Billy should remain with them. But since they have been unable to offer or introduce 
any evidence of legal adoption, it is the decree of this court that the custody of the boy be entrusted to his natural father, Dr. Robert Morley. Come here, my boy. Billy, there's much about this you don't understand. Yes, sir? Your father, Dr. Morley, is practically a stranger to you. He isn't my father. Pop's my father. I live with my mom and pop. But you're going with Dr. Morley to live at his house now. No, I don't want to. But, Billy, you must. I don't want to. But Please don't make me. Hopkins, take William up, please. Yes, ma'am. Tell Mamzelle to give him his bath and put him to bed. Very good, madam. I don't want to go to bed. William, go with Hopkins. Must I go? Yes, son. Why? Because we ask you to. This is so strange to him. You must make allowances, darling. Remember, he's, he's just a youngster. Oh, I know, Bob. But his manners are so atrocious. They're always making excuses for him. Aren't you a little too critical, dear? Perhaps. Perhaps I'm a little biased by something you said in the judge's chamber. Something I said? Yes. It hurt me quite a little. I haven't the faintest recollection of saying anything that could have hurt you. You showed me very plainly, Bob. You love your son more than you love me. Oh, darling. You testified that when you saw Billy, you wanted him more than you've ever wanted anything in your life. Hopkins. Yes, madam. I think we're finished. We shall be the great friends. Let's back up. We play this pretty game. I don't want to play that.
Coffee, madam? No coffee. Coffee, sir? No coffee. Coffee, Papa? No coffee. It was just a dream. Maybe it was for the best. Anyhow, it's a chance for Billy to get a good education. He asked of me. Uh. Very good. Now we speak a little French, Mr. Uh, voici la prune. Here is the plum. You said prune. Oh, but in French, la prune is the plum. Allons. Voici la prune. Voici la prune. Oh, no, no. Say like me. Prune. Where have you been? We've been worried about you. Mm. Paul took me to a matinee, and then we stopped by Gladys and took a bridge. You didn't include me in your plan. Now, Martha, why should we have separate plans? I can't understand. What's come over us? Oh, I don't know, Bob. I just seem to be out of everything. Billy's come between us. Billy. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? He was to be the link that would hold us together. Now, darling, let's be fair. Have you done anything to endear yourself to him? Have you tried to gain his confidence? Remember, Billy is just a youngster, hungry for companionship and affection. Darling, I don't believe you've tried to understand him. I'll try, darling. Billy. Hello, yeah. <laughs> Say, come here and let me pick your tie. <laughs> 
What a mess. What have you been doing? <laughs> Daddy and I had a long talk about you last night. And I've got a big surprise for you. Where is it? I sent Mamzelle out this morning to buy you a dog. Oh, boy. Where is it? Well, you ought to be here with it any minute. Oh, boy. How do you like your new car? Well. Let me take you for a ride. Okay. All right. Going to a fire. Hang on. Pardon me, madam. Your car is ready. Oh, thank you, Hopkins. Better kiss me goodbye, Billy. Sure. And you be a good boy. Study your French lessons. My men down and take care of your dog. Bye. Mr. Hopkins, yes? I'm going to get a new dog. You are? I hope he's like my dean. He was a swell dog. He could do most anything. Well, I hope he's a great boy. Big dog. He is a magnificent dog. Oh, grand animal. Look at me. But I believe you. What is it? Is he not beautiful, this little dog? That ain't a dog. That's a rat. Oh, he is a prize dog. His father win a medal. You're just trying to make fun of me. What if someone pulls a joke like that on you? Oh, you are a bad boy. You need to go right upstairs to your home. Seems over here. Oh. oh, that boy, he's a pussy. Well, that's hardly the kind of a dog to give a boy. Oh, you think so? Oh, mais ça alors. Vous ne connaissez rien, vous faites vous traiter des bêtises comme ça. Oh, little darling, mon petit. I think that'll be enough. Just a little bit more. <coughs> that sounds like my dean. I wonder what dog that is over there. Oh, oh, oh! Dean! Oh, come here, honey. You nice doggy. Billy! Hello, Billy. I kind of thought you would. Hey, Billy, come here. Come here. I want to show you something. Here, come around here. Old Jiggs has come to see you. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> there you are. See how glad he is to see you, huh? <laughs> Ain't you glad to see him? Yes. Yeah. Can I keep Jiggs and Beans? Well, you can keep Beans, but I'm afraid Jiggs don't belong here. <laughs> Oh, Billy, we must be going now. Oh, come on, come on. Come on, darling, come on. We got to go. Come, quick, hurry up. Goodbye, goodbye, darling. Ah, there. Billy, what else do you think I brought you? What? Your favorite cake. Where is it? Come and see. Oh, where is it? Here it is, darling. There. Your favorite cake. We must go now, darling. God bless you. Don't yes. go. No, we'll be back real soon. You we'll bet we will. Well, we'll be back very soon, Goodbye, Billy. Goodbye, Goodbye, darling. Bye, sweetheart. Bye. 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 your food. Yes, yes, go on. You shouldn't eat so fast. You'll get sick. Mother's right, son. Long distance, sir. Hello? 
Hello, Doctor. Yes, I see. When? Uh, well, I'll catch the next train out. Goodbye. Oh, darling, what's the matter? I'm asleep at once, dear. A very important operation. Oh. It's out of town, and I may be gone a couple of days. Oh, uh, darling, don't give up the opera on my account. Call up someone to go with you. Oh, dear, I wouldn't go without you. Awfully sorry. Oh, I am, too. going? You step upstairs. Oh, all right. But take one easy with you. Oh, oh this is Mrs. Moore at home. Oh, hello, Gladys. Hello, darling. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Hello, we're passing by and thought we'd drop in for a drink. Oh, fine. Johnny, were you going out? Oh, I was. Bob and I were going to the opera, but as usual, he's called out on a cable. Oh. What did you say and keep me company? Oh. I'll tell you. Let's have some bridges. It's a perfect for them. Oh, I think that'd be good. good. All right. Bye, son. Bye. Take good care of Mother while I'm away. Hey, Dad. There's going to be an awful big mess in here. Baby, uh, Billy, you're not a 
up here this minute. You hear me? Come here, I say. I didn't care to play bridge. Uh oh. <laughs> Up to your old tricks. Martha, why carry on this pretense any longer? Are you going to live here the rest of your life alone? Don't be an idiot, Paul. I mean it. Every time I come here, he's out putting mustard plasters on somebody else's wife. Ridiculous. Well, Bob's an authority. He never goes out at night except on well, important emergency cases. Let me tell you that everyone says that he married you because he wanted a mother for his boy. If you weren't so blind, you'd see that he's so wrapped up in that kid that he hasn't any time for you. Yes, Paul. You don't know what you're talking about. Didn't you practically admit as much to me the other afternoon? Oh, I was upset. Why? Because he took the kid out instead of you. Well, what would you have me do? Leave him. I want you, Martha. What? I've, I've, I've always oh, wanted Paul. you. Oh, Martha. I, I do. Uh, I love you. My Paul, you've been drinking. Paul, oh, you're you. drunk. I'm Paul, drunk. let me go. Let me alone, Paul. You don't want to go. Leave me alone, Paul. Leave my hand alone. Get out of here. Do it. You're crazy, little. My baby. Get out of here. 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 Good heavens, madam, what's happened? Send me Dr. Fleming at once. Billy, darling. Oh, my money. They're upstairs, sir.
traumatic injury with excessive loss of blood, resulting in deep coma. I've had no opportunity to make x-rays of possible fracture. But symptoms point to concussion. Arrange for x-rays immediately. something for him, won't you? Yeah. Why don't you take Mom out? Where's Martha? She went to her room just before you came in. What was Billy doing up? I think he was trying to run away. Running away? Oh, Bob, not from you. But from me. You were right, Bob. I didn't understand him. I tried to endear myself to him, but I didn't know how. Unconsciously. Um, you and Billy mean so much to each other. But for your happiness, for his, it's best that I'll leave. Come in. Dr. Fleming would like to see you. You cave in. I'm all right. Did you get Martha to lie down? She hasn't had a bit of rest since Billy was hurt. Been, been right at his bedside every minute. We, we, we couldn't get her away. Bob, I guess I had her wrong. He's an angel. Yeah. You can tell her I said that, too. Got to run along. Thanks, Doctor. By the way, you don't want another patient on your hands. See that Mrs. Morley gets some rest. She's all right. She's, She's pretty weak. She gave a lot of blood in that transfusion. Transfusion? That's why the boy is still hanging on. Go on if you need me.
Love it. He looks better than he used to look, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Does he look well? <laughs> yeah, he does. All right. Can you like this part?